why is this such an important decade? We know that we're seeing more extremes in terms of a whole range of temperatures, extreme weather events, increased deaths from heat, and we know that that is sparking insecurity as well. So it's time for us to move from a paradigm of nation security, which is really old fashioned now that we humans are a big presence on a small planet and thinking about privileging human security. The climate crisis knows no borders. Important too, to recognize the interplay between conflict, climate, and issues like international energy and food supplies and migration crises. There are estimates that we could have as many as 2 billion displaced people by the end of the century as a result of these interplays. Now here in Hawaii, the Maui fires are an example close to home of the impact that the climate crisis is having. And we know what the cause is. Back in 1856, Eunice Newton Foote was the first scientist to make the connection between increased levels of CO2 and global warming. We are now at 1.2 degrees Celsius, which is the hottest in 100,000 years. And we've entered this new age of the Anthropocene, where scientists say we are the single biggest impact on our planet and on our planet's future. Now, we know that the majority of warming comes around three quarters from burning fossil fuels. We know, too, that there is an active disinformation campaign from oil and gas. And it's very important for us to ensure that we combat that with scientific reality and sustainable action. So what are universities doing for human security? We at the ASU Julianne Wrigley Global Futures Lab are walking, working across five spaces. First of all, learning and education. Second of all, research and discovery. Third, solutions. Our Walton Solutions Center works with the private sector and with entities like cities, engaging more broadly through a whole range of media, including the arts, and then partnering broadly with networks around the world, including Congo and the World Academy of Art and Science. We have a Center for Emergency Management and Homeland Security on campus. We're also very committed to ensuring that we use our tools as a university and our connections to create a future in which well-being is attainable for all. We're delighted to be number one in sustainable impact for the US and number 10 globally. So just a couple of things I'd like to highlight before I finish. First of all, a training project with the Interparliamentary Union and their 79, 179 member countries where we have a global campaign for parliaments for the planet, where parliamentarians can share good practices in creating legislation to turn their national commitments from the UN Framework Climate Change Convention into legislation and local action. We will have a number of videos which will be available to all on different aspects of the climate crisis. Education for those who have no access to the internet, and unfortunately some 2 billion people worldwide still do not have access to the internet. One of our brilliant women professors, Dr. Laura Hossman, has created a solar powered educational learning library, Solar Spell, to ensure that those who do not have a direct connection to the internet can still access through a solar hotspot educational materials. And lastly, our We Empower UN SDG Challenge, an example of a global partnership launched by the UN Secretary General and the then President of the World Bank back in 2018. And some examples here, organic sustainable food systems with indigenous farmers, access to water. And finally, we have our own scientist based here in Hawaii, Dr. Greg Asner, who in the last couple of years has mapped all of the world's tropical shallow coral reefs, so important for storm surges, and is now building the world's largest coral restoration facility on the Big Island of Hawaii. 
and then mapping global emissions as part of Climate Trace, tracking real-time atmospheric climate emissions. Greg, as the Chief Science Officer for Carbon Mapper, is helping to document emissions at point source from both methane and CO2. So just a few of the ways in which we as universities can engage through our five dimensions to help support sustainability for people and planet, and indeed create just and regenerative global futures. Thank you.